Bonnie is here now and we have only seven minutes. Uh, Ms. Bonnie, are you there? Hey. Hey. Uh, Guess what? What? I totally screwed up the time. That's okay. That's okay. We have seven minutes. Do you want to speak for seven minutes or do you want to wait? Uh, um, you're well, here's, oh, yeah. here's what I have to tell you. Yeah. Um, they are working in the hotel and they have jackhammers going. Oh. <laughs> so the answer is I don't want to wait and I feel really stupid that I spaced out the time, but maybe we should just figure out another time. What I did want to tell you yes. is that not a lot of information has come out yet about why DeVos is doing what she's doing. Yes. So I would be highly speculating, but I, I do think it is interesting that I agree with her about her critique of distance learning, and yet yeah. I totally suspect that she's ignoring the health implications of all of this. So, I mean, we could check in for five minutes if you want, or tell me what else is possible. Well, I think, later I think it's interesting to check in for five minutes. I was telling people before that you are a special education attorney from the Toner Law Offices, and um, we would always give the disclaimer that you are giving information of a general nature, not, you know, people should see, uh, seek out a lawyer if they need legal help, right? Look at you in your hotel. Um, very fun. Uh, where would they find Tolner Law Offices? They would Google it on the web under Tolner Law because I'm so bad no, and I can't good. remember the address. That's um, okay. So look up Tolner Law Offices. That's if you're in California and they do both Northern and Southern California. So Tolner Law Offices. But I had talked to Bonnie about being on today and, and we were gonna talk about something else. And then of course, a whole bunch of things happened yesterday with education and uh, Betsy DeVos had made a statement. And that's what Bonnie was referring to that we don't have enough information yet. But I appreciate that you said that you don't disagree with her about her um, critique of uh, distance learning this last spring, because I, I don't disagree with her either. I think that it was, um, I think it was the best that it could be with absolutely no notice, but I've been waving the flag since, you know, late May, that if that's what they think they're offering in the fall, we're in trouble. Uh, but I'm concerned about flipping to the full other side and saying, oh, we'll just go back to school. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I guess because I haven't really read any analysis that helps me do anything other than just speculate as to what her reasons might be. Yeah. But taking the temperature of where we are now. Yeah. There's an attorney in our office named Sarah Fairchild, so I want to give her credit because this is her idea. She's writing letters on behalf of each of her clients to demand compensatory services now for what people didn't get during school closure. Yeah. And, you know, that's where a lawyer, a special ed lawyer's uh, thinking is, is that the three months of school closure represented a huge loss to the student who already is fighting an uphill battle in school because of the difficulty when you have a disability of actually getting a FAPE. So, you know, it's not like we had a great situation to start with and it just got incredibly worse. So, I mean, I would be saying to your listeners, some of whom, by the way, have reached out to me during COVID and it's been really, really a nice opportunity for me to get to interact with some of you in a more one-to-one -one way. Yeah. But um, I would say for, for those of you that aren't in the small minority of people that say my child has done better and my child's happier because his social anxiety is not being, you know, tested. But let, I'd say the majority of kids, this has been a loss. So that, there is a very real question about how to keep people safe and how to keep them educated. Um, but I, I, I don't think that there's going to be a one size fits all solution because every kid has different needs and every school district is different. And every parent, you know, couple is different in terms of their own health concerns. So I don't, I don't know the way, we, you know, I don't know that we're going to be able to do this as a one size. Um, no, it's all. So what I would propose that we do, um, and we can use the show as one place to explore this, 
is to figure out what individual solutions work for the individual person because it's going to be different with everybody you know i mean it, i will just say in passing and it's not really topical that the longer i do this the more types of autism i'm seeing yeah. So I don't feel like it's fair to say, well, all autistic kids need X now because they don't all need X now. Some need some things and some need very different things. So, you know, I really think we have to do very individualized planning for the fall. And I, I can tell people, I think, you know, I've sort of ventured out of my house for the first time um, in four months. And I think the, the way we remember that we used to do things is the way we think they're going to be in the future but it's not the way it was it's scary to go into a little market and see that people aren't following the social distancing rules and it's going to be very distracting to have your kid at school and you know you don't have your eyes on him i can tell i can tell people who are listening to this that um if you believe this is a dangerous infection people are not following the rules so yeah you know, you're, you're releasing your child who's not an adult into an environment that you won't have control over. And, but I also understand, I mean, we're getting a lot of information now about how um, the article I read was about mothers, but it's really about both parents, the, if, the impact of this on people who are supposed to work full time and run a school in their house. So I, I can't, I, all I can help with is individual solutions and the law. I can't figure out what to do you know, collectively, because the disease is still too new and we don't know enough about it. We don't know how children spread it. You know, I mean, there are a yeah. lot of issues. And I mean, what I wanted to come on the show and talk about, um, and I'm gonna talk about over the summer, is specific things that we can offer you that will help you get ready for fall, no matter what you're gonna do. I but the other, the other thing I wanna talk about, I don't think we have time now. My yeah. fault, I lost track of the it's time. Nice. I want to talk to you guys about kids that are that, that are the subject of a DCFS investigation and what oh, happens to a family when somebody reports the family to the Department of Children and Family Services because school districts do this and they mm -hmm. do it in a retaliatory way sometimes yeah. and I want you all to just know a little bit about it because it may be something that you see happening to you or somebody you love and you can nip it in the bud it's very, very dangerous to have the state come into your home and start an investigation for abuse and, uh, you know, or neglect. There are a lot of um, assumptions that people have that may be child protective, but sometimes they're wrong. So anyway, that was something else I wanted to talk about. Well, I, I will look forward to talking about that. Now, Bonnie, you I may remember that we're off next week. We're showing uh, reruns next week as Kevin ah, and I are taking some okay. time off. Good. So we will see you back in two weeks. How's that? Sounds good. On a Monday, right? On a Monday. Sounds uh, good. I'll, I'll send you a reminder. My email is is dead at the moment, but as soon as it's working again, I will send you a reminder. But I hope you have a wonderful trip and that you have a good time and we'll see you in two weeks. Sounds good. Nice to see your face. Bye, you everyone. Stay healthy. Bye -bye.